Hey Girl Scouts, thanks for stopping by this channel to check out part one of five of the Brownie Bugs Badge. Now my name is Duke and I'm the camp program manager here at the STEM Center of Excellence with Girl Scouts of Northeast Texas. So when you come do your camping here, you can feel free to call me by my camp name, which is Verbage. That just means I really love putting the right words together. It just feels so good. And speaking of the right words, I would love to make sure that we get kicked off with the Girl Scout promise and law, me being verbiage is I'm really into how we say the words because the Girl Scout promise and law aren't just some words that we put together and we say every time we get together. They actually mean something. Find something that speaks to you, something that you find interesting, something that you find new about the Girl Scout promise and law. The way that I try to do it is instead of focusing on the pronouns, I focus on the verbs, the action words, do, think, say. So here we go. Join me in saying the Girl Scout promise and law. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. The Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. All right, now that we've said our promise in law, let's get into what we're doing today. So today is part one of five of our Brownie Bugs badge, and we're gonna take you through it step by step. So before we get started on the actual badge itself, make sure that you have a few things. Number one, you're gonna need an adult. Why do you need an adult? The adult is there to make sure that when you do research on your bugs, especially your true bugs, in the activity that we're gonna do here in just a moment, that that adult is there to make sure that you use your resources wisely. You are getting on the right websites and they can help provide guidance for that. Or they can help guide you towards some of the right books when it comes to true bugs. Or if you have someone who's an entomologist and specializes in bugs or someone who's really, really interested in bugs, that that adult is the one helping you make sure that that is a wise resource to use. The other thing you're going to need is a pencil and paper, or crowns and paper, or markers and paper, or our friend Millie chooses to use a dry erase board and dry erase markers. And you'll find out what that activity is here in just a second. So we're gonna talk a little bit about bugs, and not all insects are bugs. Insects are a larger group and bugs are a smaller group within that. Have you guys ever heard of a Venn diagram? Let's check that out for just a second. So I made a really quick Venn diagram just for us. You can see here it is, the Venn diagram. It's all about circles. So here we have insects, right? This encompasses a lot of different type of creepy crawlies, as it were. And then inside of that, we have a smaller group called bugs, but we're gonna refer to them as true bugs. Also, true bugs are called hemiptera. Say it after me, hemiptera. You wanna make sure the emphasis is on the mip, right, hemiptera. Hemiptera means half wing, and it's gonna be up to you to find some of these half wings that we see in nature every day. And you might be surprised which ones are and which ones aren't hemiptera. So I'm gonna introduce you to one of our friends who has put together a really great poster. Let me please introduce you to my very good friend, my epic Girl Scout, Millie. Do you, need any, do you need any help? No, you got it? Okay. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll let you go. Yeah. 
this is an ant. This is an ant. And we have different parts. So I made a picture of my bug. And I showed the parts. You've got the mandibles. Mandibles, okay. You've got the antenna. The antenna. Uh, you've got the compound eyes that it's got. Ants have compound eyes. We've got the head right here. You have the middle part, which is the thorax. Then you have the abdomen. My abdomen is like right here, you know, like in the middle of me, but for an ant, it's like, it's like at the end of the ant. It's like the end of the ant. So you got the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And then these are the legs. And then I found out this really, really cool bit. The ocelli. Ocelli. Cosentai. Actually, they're called ocelli. Yes, the ocelli. But what these do, just like uh, antenna, it perceives things with its antenna, it feels things out and communicates. It also sees with its eyes. These ocelli are also used for navigation. How cool is that? Uh, actually, Millie, what? Uh, ants aren't, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, Millie, hey. Ant Homes 101, okay. An ant lives in the ground. Okay, so you've got an ant hill. And this is just the part that we see. All this stuff is underneath the ant hill. So they've got lots of different compartments. Just like a house has lots of rooms. This is like an ant mansion. <laughs> Rad. Okay, so this is the ant mansion, the ant mansions. And where do they live? I mean like ants live like pretty much anywhere. Like they live all over here. All over here. We have ants here. We definitely have fire ants here. Where ants don't live. Where ants don't live. They don't live in the North Pole. Um, they don't live in the South Pole. And they don't live in, in none of it. No, no, I mean, they, they live lots of places, but they live in, they don't live in, uh, in none of it. Nunavut is actually a territory in Canada, and ants don't live there. So what's great about ants? Ants, they take care of decomposed matter. They take organic stuff that's broken down and they eat it. And it's just like we eat food. We turn it into energy, right? They turn their food into energy as well. So they're really important as a part of our ecosystem. What's not so good about ants is really kind of subjective because ants are good for lots of different things, you know? Um, but as humans, there are some times that maybe ants and humans don't get along so well. Like if you're anywhere in Texas, like you are definitely gonna see that, uh, <laughs> you better not stump on any ant mounds here, especially those fire ants. And there are some people that are even like really super allergic to fire ants. It's crazy what can happen when you're allergic to certain things. But ants are a pretty good part of our ecosystem. Now they do have enemies. Some of the ants' enemies, spiders, birds, snakes, Ant eaters, that was a pretty low hanging fruit one. Let's be honest, everyone could guess ant eaters, but sometimes other bugs or caterpillars, all kinds of different things could eat ants. And definitely birds though. If you ever see birds peck into the ground like sparrows or grouse, you better believe they're looking for ants. <laughs> so I hope you learned a lot about ants. Millie, oh, Millie, really? ants are hymenoptera, they're not hymiptera. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't, uh, Hemiptra. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed everything you learned about ants. We're gonna learn about lots of other bugs, but this, while it's a great insect, is not a true bug. Thanks for tuning in. I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with on your bug poster, your true bug poster. Now, Millie, thank you so much. That was incredibly informative. Bye! Millie did a really great presentation. I love that she had a great picture. I love that she had labeled all of the different parts and that she did her research on the homes and the enemies and a couple other things that we're going to discuss in just a moment. But I'm gonna take you to another resource, askabiologist.asu.edu. What I really like about this website is that it ends in .edu.
So if we were to look at more true bugs, you can see that a true bug is right here. It has half wing, which means that it is solid on one part and then clear on the other. That's why it looks like it only has half a wing if you look at it from the top. And look, it's got a long sucker there. It also has very few tarsi, and that's the segmented leg. So there are only three segments here. So let's look. We've got one, two, three segments. These have all the characteristics with a true bug. So if you wanna check out more resources, make sure that you use your adult to make sure you've got the right resources and you're using them wisely. Now Girl Scouts, here's what we need you to do. You need to create a poster. You'll need to make sure that you research your bug. Make sure you pick a good one, a true bug, a hymiptera, don't forget. The other thing you'll need to do is draw a picture and label all the parts of that bug on your picture. Then you'll need to answer some questions. So, where your bug lives. Make sure you include that information on your poster. Where does your bug live? How long does your bug live? You might be surprised by some of these answers. What it eats. What does your bug eat? What is its main food source? Those things are very important because it's all about a part of the ecosystem. What is good about this bug? Now that's something I really want you to think about the big picture when it comes to bugs and insects, okay? All creatures play a very important and vital part of our ecosystem. What is not so good about your bug? Again, I want you to think about how all things can either positively or negatively impact the ecosystem. Who are its enemies? What enemies does your bug have? What wants to eat it or what wants to attack it? I think those are some very interesting things that you are going to want to find out about your bug and make sure you include that on your poster. So thank you so much for participating in video number one, which covers part one of the Brownie Bugs Badge. And we would love for you to take advantage of the other content that we're continuing to develop. You can find that at gsnetx.org or check out our Facebook page. You'll see a lot of content that's continuously being posted there. So without further ado, make sure that you end this video, you do your project, you make sure you show somebody all of your hard work and gear up for video number two because we're getting ready to talk a lot more about bugs. See you soon.